I want to talk a little bit about accruals and deferrals. Now, we, what we learned so far is that if you're on the cash basis of accounting, you don't recognize revenue or expenses until you receive cash or pay cash. But GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, require us to be on the accrual basis of accounting. The accrual basis of accounting says we recognize revenue when it's earned and expenses when they're incurred whether we've received cash or paid cash or not. Cash may come first, cash may come at the same time, cash may come after we've earned the revenue or incurred the expense. And so that's when accruals and deferrals come in. That's when we have to account for these timing differences. Now with an accrual we're going to recognize the revenue or expense before we receive or pay cash. We recognize the revenue or expense now in the current period even though we may not pay cash or receive cash until later in some future accounting period. Deferrals are the opposite. With deferrals, we deferred revenue or deferred expenses, we receive cash now, or pay cash now in the current period, but we defer recognition of the revenue or expense until later, until some future accounting period, hence the name deferral. So with accruals, we record revenue or expenses now in the current period, even though we haven't exchanged cash yet. With deferrals, it's the opposite. We have exchanged cash, but we're going to defer recognizing that revenue or expense until later. Now, let's talk about accruals a little bit. Because, as I mentioned, there are two types of accruals. There's accrued revenue, and there's accrued expense. Accrued revenue is where we need to record revenue now in the current period, even though Cash hasn't been exchanged yet. And a good example is when you provide services for a customer now and they're going to pay you later. If you've performed the service in the current period, even though you haven't gotten cash yet, we need to go ahead and accrue that revenue. We do that by debiting an asset like accounts receivable for say a hundred dollars and then we need to credit revenue for a hundred dollars even though haven't got any cash yet sometimes down the road the customer will pay us hopefully when that happens we can debit cash for a hundred dollars and take the receivable off the books. But this right here is the accrual entry where we accrue the revenue in the current period. Now, accrued expenses work in a similar way. With accrued expenses, we have to get the expense on the books now even though we haven't paid cash yet and won't pay it till later. The best example of this is accrued salaries. And let's think of what, what happens with salaries at the end of the year. And let's look at the calendar. So we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Our employees, and we'll keep it simple, they, pay, they work five days a week and get paid on Friday. Friday's payday. Everybody loves payday. 
However, this is the last week in December. And then this particular week, twelve thirty one, the last day of the year, falls on Wednesday. New Year's is on Thursday, and our employees don't get paid till Friday. Well, GAP says we have to recognize expenses in the period we incur them. So we have to put the expenses related to paying employees for these three days on the books. We have to accrue those expenses. Let's say our employees get paid $500 per week. We have to accrue these three days' expenses which we do by debiting an expense, we're going to debit the wage expense account for one, two, three hundred dollars, and we're going to credit the liability wages payable for three hundred dollars. Because even though we haven't paid the employees for working through these three days yet, and we won't pay them till Friday, we owe them the money. We've incurred the expense. So we have to accrue this wage expense and get it on the books. Now, when Friday comes along and it's payday, we've got to pay our employees. And we have to pay them the whole thing. We have to pay them all $500. So we're going to credit cash for $500. Now, we had a liability on the books of $300. Wages payable. When we pay them the $300, we can take that liability off the book. 